I trust that the more you learn uh, trigonometry, the more you enjoy it. Uh, we are going to look at another specific type of question now, and it's a question that you're going to see every year until you finish matric, and that is this Pythagoras type question. Okay, so before we dive into those in terms of trigonometry, I just want to make sure that everybody knows Pythagoras or remembers it, because I know it might have been a long time since we've seen it. So I've got a triangle here, and I've simply called it side X, side Y, and side R. It is specifically a right-angled triangle, which means that it has a hypotenuse. Okay, and then over the years, people have started calling this, because it makes a bit of an L shape here, these other two sides, the legs. Okay, so the theorem of Pythagoras says that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of those two legs squared. So let's say leg one squared plus leg two squared. Okay, now that's really not a mathematical way of saying something. So what I've done is I've just given it some names. Okay, so r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that is because Pythagoras said so. Okay, so whenever you use the theorem of Pythagoras, it's important that you give him credit. So in any right angle triangle, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. Okay, so you can say r squared equals x squared plus y squared or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Uh, whichever one works best for you. And then just to note that if, for example, you were missing the x value, then you could manipulate the equation so that x could be on its own. So that you'd end up moving y squared to the other side. So x squared is equal to r squared minus y squared. That's also true. And that's just another variation of Pythagoras's theorem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some time to look at what we know about trigonometry. We've now revised what we know about Pythagoras, and then we're going to bring it all together. So let's quickly have a look at how trigonometry relates to x, y's, and r's. We did uh, dive into that in the previous video, so we're just going to do a quick recap now. So on the Cartesian plane, what we saw was that we could actually, I mean, we can draw any arm anywhere in this Cartesian plane and then drop it down to the x-axis to form a right angle triangle. And we'll always have an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and an r-value. And then what we did was we said, well, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but in this instance, I can actually assign um, the x and the y-coordinates. Remember, x is going to be this length here, so this would then be an x here and a y there. Okay, just another way of looking at it if you look at the coordinates in terms of the length of line segment. Okay, so um, opposite over hypotenuse on the Cartesian plane then is actually y over r. Cos becomes x over r and tan y over x. The other thing that we saw was that we could, if we needed to, we could draw an arm anywhere. It could be in this quadrant, could be in that quadrant and um, eventually we'll be drawing, but the, we can have trigonometry in all quadrants of this Cartesian plane, and that led to this cast rule as we refer to it. So in quadrant one, all ratios are positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive, which means cos or tan would be negative. Quadrant three, tan is positive, and that means that sine and cos are negative, and in quadrant four, cos is positive, which means that sine and tan are negative. Okay, so that's what we learned about trigonometry on the Cartesian plane, and we are now ready to combine that with the theorem of Pythagoras. So here's an example. Consider the sketch below. Okay, let's have a look. They've given us an angle here starting at the x-axis. That's where all trig angles start, okay? Um, they've given a line segment that's 13 units long, and they've told us the coordinates here at this point are minus 5 and then unknown. Oh, so it's just y. And then they say, without using a calculator, determine cos beta and tan beta. Okay, so we need to be able to recognize that this is what is called a Pythagoras type question. Okay, so either they'll give us a sketch or the question will specifically say, use a sketch. Okay, so that's the first thing is that this sketch is a big clue that this is a Pythagoras-type problem, okay? 
or question. The other thing that's always true for a Pythagoras type question is that we will be told to do it without using a calculator. All right, and once you recognize that it's a Pythagoras question, it's very easy to solve. But it's about picking up what you need to do. Okay, so they've asked us for cos beta and tan beta. We are on the Cartesian plane. So just for our own reference, we can remember that cos is actually x over r and tan is y over x. So basically, something to do with coordinates here. Okay, what I've got is an x coordinate and an r value. I always say r value because the radius is a length. So it's not a coordinate. It's always going to be a positive length. Okay, we need to work out this y value or this y coordinate here. And because we've recognized this as a Pythagoras type problem, we know that Pythagoras can actually help us to do that. So the first thing we do is that we want this to become a triangle. Okay, and whenever we draw triangles in the Cartesian plane, we always drop them down to the x-axis. Right, so now what I've done is I've drawn a right angle triangle so that Pythagoras can be true. Okay, what I know is that if this is the coordinate minus 5, then this here is also minus 5. Okay, this point. So then the length between the origin and that point is 5 units. Okay, now Pythagoras specifically applies to lengths. So that's why I'm, I'm very interested in using that 5. If you use the minus 5, though, Pythagoras would be forgiving because you square it out and it becomes positive. Okay, so Pythagoras says that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Okay, that's always going to be my opening line in a question like this. So although they've asked me for cos beta, I recognized sketch, no calculator, ah, I need to do Pythagoras before I can answer these questions. Okay, let's substitute what we know. So we know that x is 5 units, so 5 squared plus y squared equals r is 13 units, and we're going to square that. Okay, so 25 plus y squared equals 169. Let's move this 25 over. It's going to become minus on the other side. So y squared equals 169 minus 25, which is 144. And then I don't want y squared, I just want y. So I'm going to square root both sides. Whenever I introduce a root, I do so with a plus or a minus sign. Okay, that is the best habit you can get into. So y is either equal to plus or minus 12. Now I look at the sketch. Okay, because remember, we've got a positive x-axis, a negative x-axis. We've got a positive y and a negative y. So I need to decide which answer is true. And this point here, y, is definitely part of the positive side of things. So I'm now going to rewrite this coordinate here as minus 5 and positive 12. And now I'm ready to answer their questions. So they wanted to know what was cos beta, let's say here, cos of beta is equal to, now cos is x, the x coordinate, over r, minus 5 over 13. And secondly, what is tan beta? Tan is y over x, so 12 over minus 5. And that is our first Pythagoras problem. Now, in these Pythagoras questions, they don't always give us the sketch like what we just saw. Sometimes they just give us a whole load of information. But have a look with me at the information that they've given us. I can straight away see my clues. So they say, given theta is an element between 0 and 90, and cos theta is equal to 4 over 5, and then here we go, the magic lines. Without using a calculator, make use of a diagram to determine. Okay, so I see straight away those keywords. No calculator and use a diagram. All right, so that tells me, hmm, Pythagoras is going to come into play here. So I need to try and draw a triangle somewhere on my Cartesian plane. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to remember the cast rule. Okay, because they've actually given me two bits of information here. They've told me that theta is somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees and that cos theta is 4 over 5. So cos theta then is a positive fraction. 
So let's draw a small little cast rule here because this is just going to guide us. And now we're going to apply this bit of information that they've told us. So theta is between 0 and 90. That's our first thing that we can tick. And then secondly, where is cos positive? Well, cos is positive here, where C for the cast rule tells us it is. And here where A for all ratios are positive. Okay, and wherever I have two ticks, that is where I will draw my sketch. So in quadrant one, I have drawn a triangle. Remember, it's always a radial arm, the radius, uh, that could reach a circle. And then you drop it down to the x-axis, and we want a 90-degree triangle so that Pythagoras is true. Okay, so that's the first thing I've done. Now I need some numbers to fill in here. Okay, the information I haven't fully used yet is the fact that cos is equal to 4 over 5. So on the Cartesian plane, I know that cos is equal to x over r. And so what that means is that 4 would be x and 5 would be r. Okay, so now I can substitute that in. I can say, well, here's a 5, and this would be 4 and something. Okay, and because I recognize from these two clues, no calculator, use a diagram, that this is Pythagoras, that's going to be my next step. So I'm going to say, okay, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then we can substitute in. X we know is 4, Y we don't know, R is 5, and if you're very smart, you actually recognize that Pythagorean triple, or maybe just if you've done enough of them like I have. Okay, so if 3, 4, and 5 is a Pythagorean triple, which means we often see them together, but you can do all the working out, and you'll see, well, Y is going to equal either plus or minus, Three. Remember, we're going to take that y squared and square root it. When we introduce a square root, we want a positive or negative. Okay, it's a y value. It's above the x-axis, so we're going to take the positive 3 as our answer there. And now we've got an x, a y, and an r value. And so we can answer their question, which was to determine the value of tan theta. So therefore, tan theta, let me put my theta in there is equal to, well, what do we know about tan? Tan is y over x. So y is 3 and x is 4. Tan theta is equal to 3 quarters. Here's one last example to see if we can really get you thinking. Okay, so they say here, if 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0 and tan theta is smaller than 0, here are the magic words. Without using a calculator, make use of a diagram to determine the value of. And then there we've got it, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Okay, so in the previous one, we started by popping down a cast rule so that we could see where to draw our diagram. Okay, so we're going to start in a very similar fashion here. Uh, we've got our cast rule down. We know we need to draw it because we've recognized those clues for a Pythagoras type problem. Okay, now let's try and interpret what they've given us here. The first thing that I want you to notice is that here we've got information, but it would really be helpful if this information was more in a standard form. So let's first isolate the trig ratio. In other words, we're kind of going to solve for that sine theta. So isolate trig ratio. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that 3 sine theta minus 2 equals 0 and now we're going to say okay let's move that minus 2 over so 3 sine theta equals 2 and then let's divide both sides by 3 and so we end up with sine theta equals 2 over 3. okay this is helpful for multiple reasons one because i know that sine is y over r so that's going to help me when i draw another thing that this um, fraction is now telling me is that sine is a positive value. Okay, so where is sine positive? According to the cast rule, it's in quadrant 2, where I see an S, or in quadrant 1, where all are positive. Okay, so by isolating the trig ratio, I've started my journey on figuring out which quadrant to draw in. Okay, remember we need two ticks to draw it, so let's have a look at the next information they gave us, which was the fact that tan theta 
is smaller than zero. Okay, so that's just their way of writing negative. Okay, anything smaller than zero is negative. Anything bigger than zero is positive. Think about the numbers and you'll see it makes perfect sense. Okay, so where is tan negative? Tan is negative where I don't see a T. So either there in quadrant two or in quadrant four. Remember in quadrant one, all are positive. So that one's no good. So now I know, ah, I need to draw this in quadrant two. Let's put our information in now. Uh, so we've got y over r there is equal to sine. So y is two. So if I want to plot these coordinates here, I've got something and two, and r is equal to three units. Okay, now I'm ready to work out x using Mr. Pythagoras' theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's going to be Pythag. And now we can get x on its own, right? So x squared we don't know. y is 2. r is 3. So x squared plus 4 equals 9. x squared equals 5. And then we're going to square root both sides. So plus or minus the root of Five. Okay, remember they said without using a calculator. So I don't know what the root of 5 is without using a calculator. That's an irrational number. So we'll just leave it as the root of 5. Okay, and now we need to decide plus or minus. It's an x value. Looking at the x-axis, we've got a positive side and a negative side. So this time we're going to take the negative root of 5. Be careful there. That's something that often gets overlooked. Okay, and now we can answer their question. So they've asked us there for sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Sine is y over r, cos is x over r. So I'm going to substitute in. The y value there is 2, r is 3, plus cos there, the x value is root of 5 over 3. Okay, now we're going to square. So that means this squared applies to the numerator and the denominator. So we end up with 4 over 9 plus, have a look at this one. This is going to work out well for us. A negative times itself. So minus times a minus is a plus. And then root of 5 times root of 5, those roots just cancel out. Okay, so that ends up being 5 over 3 times 3, which is 9. 4, that's a common denominator now. So 4 plus 5 is 9 over the denominator of 9. And so what a beautiful answer there. 1.